Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's a great pleasure and honor to be here amongst all of you. Um, and a big thank you to Stillman's and to uh, Mr. Kapil as well. So I'll be basically talking about the ship recycling market, um, how it has evolved uh, these past few years, and also taking a closer look uh, into Bangladesh. First of all, who are we? Um, we are cash buyers of uh, vessels and offshore units. Um, we exist because all the recycling yards, whether it is in Turkey, Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, China, and the rest of the world, some are even in the Caribbean, um, the recyclers tend to pay in letters of credit. This is something that ship owners do not want. Um, we can buy vessels, whether it is on a delivered basis, which means that a ship owner can bring the ship to the delivery port, let's say, for example, Chittagong, or we can buy on an as-is basis, meaning anywhere in the world, whether it's Japan, Korea, whether it's in Mexico, we take over the vessel, we flag, we insure, and bring the vessel ourselves. Um, recently, there is this Hong Kong Convention guidelines which were developed for the safer and more environmental, environmentally friendly uh, ship recycling procedures. Um, and according to this Hong Kong Convention, cash buyers are actually considered themselves as owners of the vessel. Just briefly about GMS, we were established in 1992 in the USA. The uh, president and CEO, Dr. Anil Sharma, started buying Navy ships from Russia and from the United States, buying them and then mainly uh, recycling them in, uh, in Alam, in, in, in India. Um, we have delivered about one-third of the world's fleet sold for recycling, excluding the Chinese subsidized tonnage. We're the first uh, ISO 9000-2000 certified cash buyer. Um, so far, just to give you a rough idea, we've done over 3,000 ships, which equates to around 100 million dead weight. Um, and recently, especially since 2011, we've been doing consistently over 200 ships every year. Um, offices, as you can see, We've ex expanded. We have offices now in Germany, Greece, UAE, in Dubai, that's where I'm based, Singapore, China, Korea, Japan. And we have uh, exclusive sales agents in each of the main uh, recycling destinations that talk to their buyers every day. We get the prices from them. Um, that's about it. So, what affects the prices of a ship that goes for recycling? We have the basic fundamentals, supply and demand. The main commodity which we uh, look at is the steel prices, whether it is a good quality steel, which is a ship steel plate, or whether it is a melting, uh, melting steel or scrap steel. Um, currency exchange rates and government regulations. Recently, I don't know if you've heard, you might be aware of this. There was a possibly, not possibly, it was the worst accident in, um, in uh, Gaddani, one of our tankers exploded, killing more than 20 people, unfortunately. So something like this can also affect the price. And now, for example, Pakistan is not going to accept tankers until further notice, until they tighten the rules. This can then affect the neighboring countries as well. India knowing that, oh, no tankers are going to go to Pakistan, <coughs> they're going to adjust their price levels. Another example is now with India, the 500,000 rupee notes, which are being stopped. Again, this is creating um, a, a negative side effect, even to recycling, uh, for reasons quite obvious. So, as I've already covered, the five major countries that do 95% of the ship recycling is Turkey, Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, and China. Um, India is the biggest, uh, has around 167, let's say 172 yards, 
Bangladesh comes in second with around 120 yards. Pakistan at uh, 43, and China, which has around 22. Turkey, again, is one of the smallest countries. Uh, markets, excuse me, is uh, got around 18 yards. Uh, we can see here that the majority, number one, is India. Um, I can't see this. this one. And Bangladesh comes in second with 32%. So Bangladesh is a very, very significant player when it comes to ship recycling. And uh, what I like about Bangladesh is they like the big ships. Traditionally, they, they, they want 20,000 uh, lightweight ships, 30,000 lightweight ships. Moving on, just some historical highs. In, uh, before 2012, the record where the most lightweight was uh, recycled was in 1985. Um, roughly 11 million lightweight was recycled in one year alone. Uh, we see that that record was broken uh, in 2012, where 12.1 million was recycled, and we are seeing that this year we're also catching up to last year's. Uh, 9 million lightweight. Let's see how the year ends. Um, now, recycling is basically what balances out the shipping market. The shipping market is not doing well as we speak. The bulkers are doing slightly better the past couple of weeks, but no big profits there. The tanker market was doing okay, and the container ship is just dreadful. Um, and this is, we can see that up until now, around 26.8 million dead weight of bulkers has been recycled, whereas 23.9 dead weight, a million dead weight has been uh, has hit the water, new buildings. So we're seeing that the recycling is surpassing the new buildings this year for bulkers, which is a very positive thing. In the tanker market, it is exact up. the exact opposite because they're doing well. And then containers, where the bloodbath is happening, basically, um, we're seeing that 144 containers have been recycled, whereas only 63 have uh, come into the water. Now, what effect does ship recycling have on the rest of the pillars of shipping? New buildings, there's a, a direct relationship there. More and more uh, aggressive recycling creates room for more new building tonnage. And uh, aggressive order book creates a need for aggressive recycling. So it goes both ways. Um, ship recycling affects the average age of the existing fleet. So the more older ships um, leave the market, it improves the the average age of the existing fleet. Of course, it creates incentives for owners, owners that cannot, for every ship that basically reaches the end of the life, um, it needs to be recycled, and then owners can focus either to purchase a new building, to order a new building, or to purchase a second-hand vessel. And last but not least, recycling creates a space for fast adoption of newer technologies. India, I would regard as the market that has the most experience in ship recycling. Um, and as every year progresses, every year comes, the technologies and the methods are being um, advanced. As you know, in shipping, there's two types of broking. There's sale and purchase and there's charting. On the charting side, um, there's a, a negative relationship, as like with a new building. A bad charting market causes more ships to be scrapped, which we are seeing now, and a good scrap market leads to increase in the charter rates. Um, there are technical and age requirements from charters to determine the supply for tonnage for recycling. Um, in other fields, we see the ship recycling affects underwriters, insurance companies, flag states, other surveyors, class surveyors, um, and of course recycling yards and ship owners. Now, 
<laughs> when a ship gets recycled, around 96, 97% of it gets actually recycled, which means that it So what comes out of the ships? You have electrical cables, chilling compressors, engines, furniture, kitchenware, motors, pipes, re-rollable steel. So when, when you recycle the ship properly, it is, as you can see, a very green industry and resources generated by one industry can be used by others. Spares, machinery and steel, which can be used cost effectively, cost effectively in a ship repair yards. You have positive outcomes such as environmental. Uh, environmentally, it gets rid of older, less fuel efficient vessels and most environmentally friendly way of making steel. Other benefits of using iron and steel instead of virgin iron ore offers savings in virgin materials, which we call the raw materials, about 90% reduction in water use, reduction in air pollution, mining wastes, and in consumer waste generated. Typical items we used from a vessel include steel, which is all the steel that comes into the ship. It's being onsold to uh, rolling mills, which then convert the ship steel uh, into rods and bars. You have uh, generators and gener and main engines and motors that are used in <coughs> garment manufacturing factories. And boilers, which are used in rice and jute mills. Refrigerators, which are purchased by mid houses with small hotels and factories. So you can see that pretty much most of the vessel gets in the recycled. Looking at Bangladesh specifically, uh, so far this year around 192 vessels have been concluded for recycling, which is around 2.6 million metric tons. Um, comparing to India, as I said, India is the largest, it is only around 300,000 short of India, which, which is a great accomplishment, in other words. We have this, um, in ship recycling, there's this um, index called the Baltic Demolition Assessment. It's a chart on the right. Uh, basically, it takes the average ship prices per ton. And if you compare it to the Bangladesh, this is the good quality steel, i.e. ship plates. If you compare the two, you can see that there's a positive correlation. Now, Things are developing in uh, ship recycling. More owners are becoming more scared to just simply beach a vessel. Many Norwegian owners, Japanese owners um, will focus, used to focus only in China or Turkey, mainly China, because they use a different method, which is alongside, or in a dry dock. So beaching was a big no-no. So th this is evolving now. In India, for example, there's great, great, great improvements which are being done. Um, already, around uh, 14 shipyards have obtained the statement of compliance according to the Hong Kong Convention. And we're expecting another 25 yards moment, uh, by the end of this year. In Bangladesh, unfortunately, the number is zero. The main issue the main issue is that Bangladesh does not have a general <coughs> landfill facility which is required by the Hong Kong Convention in order to also uh, have uh, the yards obtain this statement of compliance. So this is one thing where Bangladesh, in our view, needs to uh, progress and to, to improve their yards. So of course, it's easier said than done. <clears throat> to finish off, just to show you some photos, of how the, sh the ship recycling yards look like, in case you have not seen one. This is one uh, in India. This one, I believe, is the uh, Leela Yard in uh, India, plot number two. So you can see how well organized one can look like in China, which is perceived green by default. You can also see these th things in China, which is not necessarily that green. <coughs> and here's a good one in China, which again you can see the big difference. This one is in the USA. Doesn't look too good. 
This one is in Turkey. This one is in Bangladesh. I'm not mistaken. This is PHP. Very nice, very organized. I think one of the largest yards in Bangladesh in Chicago. And before you all fall asleep, closing thoughts. As you can see, ship recycling is one of the pillars of shipping and is imperative requirement in order to achieve the desired equilibrium in the industry. <clears throat> it is a necessity for ships to be recycled. The average age of the ship that used to be recycled in 2010 was around 30 years old. 30, 35, 28. Today we are recycling big container ships which are built 2006, that is only 10 years old. So you can see how bad the shipping industry is doing, and you can also understand how necessary it is for ships to be recycled. Having them just idle just puts the problem down further down the line. The services that are required to be provided by the cash buyers are constantly changing um, and can change from a simple recycle process to more complex deliveries involving responsible recycling practices. What we do is not only buy and sell the ship, buy from the owner, sell to the recycling yard, but we also provide services in supervising the recycling process after the delivery. In order to further improve the implementation of the recycling standards and to maximize, maximize the value of the assets in a highly competitive environment, where there are continuous development regula regulations, more efficient means of control will be mandatory. So we're seeing this very evidently in India. Things are starting to improve in Bangladesh as well. The same with Pakistan. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.